God. Hallelujah, 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 glory, glory. We're just going to begin at this time. We're going to come together in prayer at this time. Hallelujah, glory to God. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Let's just start giving our God praise. Let's just start thanking him. He's brought us here today that we can give him glory. He's woken us up this morning. Hallelujah. Let's just give him thanks. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's open up our mouth and glorify our God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let us exalt his name together. Let's lift up the name of our God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. We've come to worship you, God. Lord, let us be focused upon you, O God. Let us give you the glory, Lord. We want you to be exalted, to be lifted up in this place, O God, because you alone are worthy. So, God, you get the glory and you get the praise and you alone be lifted up at this time, O God, because it's all about you. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. We exalt you, God. You're worthy to be praised, and there's no one like you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we've come to magnify the Lord. We've come to glorify him. Hallelujah, we've come to meet with our God. Hallelujah, glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you that you are enthroned, Lord. You inhabit the praises of your people. And Lord, we come to glorify you. So we thank you that you will have your way, that you will take your place, that you would reign over this place, over our hearts, over our lives, over this atmosphere, God. Lord, we need you. We need you, God. We need you, God. We need you, Lord. We need you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need you, God. Hallelujah. We need you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need you, God. Hallelujah. We need you, God. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord. We can't do anything without you, God. We need you. So come and take your place and have your way, Lord. In the name of Jesus. God, we come humbly before you. Ask that you will cleanse us and purify our hearts, oh God. Hallelujah, purify our hearts, oh God, that we can ascend deeper and higher in you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We need you, God. We will extol you. We will give you glory, Lord. We will honor and exalt and magnify your holy name, for you alone are worthy. You alone are holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for your blood that cleanses us from all sin. We thank you, Lord, that our, hallelujah, our transgressions are forgiven, that our sins are forgiven, that we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. The blood of Jesus has made us clean. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. So we can bless you. We can magnify you. Hallelujah. Because you have made us clean, Lord. You have made us whole. You have made us new. We are free free indeed free to glorify your name free to live for you free to worship you god free lord free hallelujah to come together hallelujah to give you glory free to operate lord in the calling and purpose and giftings you have placed in and upon our lives freedom liberty in the name of jesus glory 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 Hallelujah. I pray that you move all limitations of the minds, of our minds of God that stops us from operating. Everything that hinders us from really pressing in and giving you glory. I thank you that you remove it in the name of Jesus. Every discouragement, everything, Lord. Lord, we cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Hallelujah. And we thank you and we trust you. We thank you that we are kept by your power. We are kept by your power so we can continue to press forward and higher in you because you keep us. You keep us from falling. Hallelujah. It's your blood that cleanses us. Your everlasting flow that we can be clean and we can walk before you day by day in righteousness, God. Hallelujah. We're so grateful. We're so grateful, Lord. We could have been anywhere else. We could have been lost in sin, but you love us and you've forgiven us of our sins. You have washed and cleansed us and made us clean and made us new. And we have life in you. Hallelujah. We were dead in sin, but we've been made alive unto righteousness by the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you right now. And we pray that you will have your way in Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. That means no matter the circumstance, no matter even how we came in, we choose to bless him. And not just with our words, but with our lives. And it's him that makes us clean, that we can live right before him, and that our lives will give him glory, that our worship will go up as a sweet smell and aroma unto him. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together in unity. We will exalt his name together as one. Hallelujah. For he has made us free. He has washed and cleansed us. We have been made new. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart and is him that purifies us and cleanses us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. So we're going to magnify his name today. We're not going to hold back. We're going to give him glory because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We're going to shake off everything that will try to limit us from worshiping our God. What have we come to offer up to our God this afternoon? Hallelujah. What are we going to offer up to our God this afternoon? Let us not be distracted, but let us really give him worship, give him glory, blessing him, letting his praise. So we need to hear from him. We need to stay connected that we can hear what he wants us to, to declare onto him in the atmosphere. Even if you're not in the praise and worship team, in the congregation, what is the Lord wanting us to declare onto him, about him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're not going to hold back. Let's just be free in the presence of God to give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Casting all your cares upon him, laying aside every weight and sin, Giving him glory because he's worthy. And whatever he's called for us to do today in this atmosphere, we will hear and do in Jesus' name. We will declare what he wants us to declare. Hallelujah. 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 Be focused. Hallelujah. And hear from God. Not just now, but even as we continue throughout the week, we've got to hear from God and declare what he wants us to declare as his people, as his children, as his prophets, as his servants, as his spokespeople. We have a duty and a responsibility to hear from and declare. Hallelujah. We are his children. We are called by him to do his work. So let's continue to glorify him. And I pray that everyone that comes in will just enter in and just give him glory. That he will do whatever he wants to do in this atmosphere today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just put our hands together now for the King of Kings. The awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, the one who reigns forevermore. Hallelujah. We honor you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, for your strength. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you that you are with us. An ever-present help in the time of trouble. God, we honor you. Lord, we honor you. Thank you, God, for being our Father, oh God, for being our banner. Hallelujah. We do not walk alone, oh God, but you walk beside us. You go before us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, it is in you we stand. Hallelujah. It is in you that we live. Oh God, we move, we breathe, we have our being. Hallelujah. We honor your presence, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just open your mouths and just begin to bless him for who he is. Hallelujah. For what he has done. He is so kind to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the one that's provided. Hallelujah. We are never in lack. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. Hallelujah. We, your people, give you praise. We, your people, acknowledge your hand, your hand of grace. Hallelujah, your hand of mercy in our lives. Thank you, God, you've kept us from dangers seen and unseen. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just find your place of worship. Find your place of worship. Just where you are, just find your place of worship.
Hallelujah. He is your Father. He is your help. He is your strength today. Hallelujah. He said that we can come unto Him boldly. Hallelujah. Come unto Him boldly. Hallelujah. He has made the way. Hallelujah. He is the way maker. Hallelujah. He is the strength giver. God, we honor you. Hallelujah. We thank you for being God and Lord over our lives. We do not have to search for another. But in you we have found salvation. In you we have found peace. Hallelujah. In you we have found joy. Joy like no other. Hallelujah. You are the one that keeps our minds. Hallelujah. From going crazy. Hallelujah. You have sustained us through the week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are unchanging, Father. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. You are my strength. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, strength like no other, strength like no other, reach out to me. He gives us strength from day to day, from week to week. You are my strength. strength. Hallelujah. Through the trial, through the pain, He strengthens us on the inside. Strength like no other. Reach it. In the fullness of your grace, in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up. over and over and over and over again. You lift me up. In the fullness of your grace. In the fullness of
in and caught you, stepped in and delivered you, stepped in and made a way out of no way. Hallelujah. That is the kind of God we serve. His love never fails. His love never runs out. Hallelujah. 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 Just lift your hands just where you are. Just begin to tell him thank you. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're amazing, yes you are. You're amazing, yes you are. You are awesome, yes you are. You are awesome, yes you are. We love you, Lord. Your love is kind. Your love is Your love is patient. You fill my heart. You fill my heart with so much peace. With so much peace and joy. And joy. Real joy. You're amazing. You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. You make my life feel brand new. You're amazing. You're amazing. You make my life. You make my life feel brand new. Sing again. Your love is kind. Your love is kind. Oh yes, it is. Your love is patient. You are patient with us, Lord. You feel my heart.
Redeemer, 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 an unfailing love a love that is excess running over there's never ending to his love when some don't love us he will always love us but unfailing love through it all he will love you he will love you he will love you with an excessive love we thank you Lord we thank you for your love Lord we thank you for your kindness Lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We may not get a chance to tell you tomorrow how much we love you. Now is the time. Now is the time to give him all the praise and all the glory. Because we don't know what's happening tomorrow. We can't see the future. We can't see what's happening in the next few hours. This might be your only chance to give him praise and to tell him that you love him. To give him an undivided love, right? Love, love, give him all of you, all of you, all of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm failing love. I'm failing love. Hallelujah. Oh, what sacrifice. The Son of God given for me. My debt he paid, hallelujah. My debt he paid, hallelujah. And my death he died. But I, hallelujah, you will live, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for your unfailing love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come like a mighty rushing wind today. Hallelujah. Oh, so hallelujah. Holy Spirit, take control. Hallelujah. Come like a mighty rushing wind. Hallelujah. Open the windows of heaven today, hallelujah. Come like never before, hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, take control, hallelujah. 
praise, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let praises rise from the inside, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Holy Spirit, fill our lives, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your anointing that breaks the yoke, hallelujah. Your anointing breaks the yoke, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, anointing, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, there's healing in your praise, hallelujah. There's a breakthrough in your praise. I had a bubble stick and a mamaya, and 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 a bubble stick and a mamaya, Yes, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, heal us today, Father God. Restore us today, Father God. Lord, let us wear your full armor today. And every day, Father God, that we face, hallelujah, let us wear your helmet of salvation. Oh, Lord, our breastplate of righteousness. Lord, our waist girded with truth, Father God. Our feet shod with the peace, Father God. The gospel of peace. Lord, let us wear, Father God, carry your sword of the Spirit, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and the shield of faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord, with every breath that I take both for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. to you for God Lord you hear every word every cry thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I need for you. I need for you. Every
have some altar workers. God, you're awake 24 7. We can call upon you every minute, every second, 
every millisecond you are there your ears are forever open father god and i love and i thank you father god for this service we thank you father god for your holy spirit that's present within us lord we thank you for abiding within us father god we thank you like you've come like a mighty rushing wind father god lord i thank you lord jesus for your love your unfailing love towards us father god as we bring on your your daughter who's coming father god to give the word i pray that she will decrease father god so that you can increase within her let your holy spirit cover her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet lord let it be your words father god even though she has done her revision father god we pray that you would take full control and have your own sweet way father god let us hear from you today father god let your word touch us today lord and bless us and heal us and restore us today in the name of jesus i pray that every ear will be um, open today father god i pray that every heart will be willing to receive today father god lord your word is truth lord your word is the good word it's the good news it's the only word and i pray father god that we will go forth lord with power and strength declaring your word in the name of jesus 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 bless your child lord jesus i remove fear and doubt father god from her mind right now in the name of jesus give her power right now father god Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Saints in Christ, I present to you this afternoon, Sister Joanna. Please give her a hand as she comes up. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is so good that he doesn't do anything. Um, he's a God of order. And as Sister Golda is speaking about restoration, and this is literally the word that the Lord placed on my heart five years ago. And in the season I'm in, he just brought it back to remembrance as I was going through a dry season. So I, I thank God. I praise God for the atmosphere, for the Holy Spirit. Um, I want to greet my pastor, Pastor Laman, Sister Bev, and every single person in the congregation today. I pray that the word would just minister to you the same way it ministered to me. I'll be brief, but I will allow the Holy Spirit to move. Um, we sang this morning, he's our healer, he's the one who healed us, and I'm a living testimony that he's truly a healer. I wouldn't be standing here if it was not for his healing power and and, and for those who saw me coming in the church in 2017, you, you know what I'm talking about. And the restoration, that, uh, uh, it, it, it's only God. Only God, that's all I can say. Amen. So um, our key scripture today is taken from Hosea chapter 2 from um, verse 1 to 7. So you may be seated. Amen. Amen. So Hosea chapter 2 from 1 to 7. And then we'll go to Joshua 7, 20 to 26. Amen. And most of you, some of you might be familiar with it, but Hosea um, talked a lot about redemption. I mean, the Bible is a story of redemption and God's love as the praise and worship team sang this morning about God and his excess love and the way he loves us so much. He's a healer, he's a redeemer. And in Hosea chapter 2, or through the book actually of Hosea, there's a picture of redemption and how God wants to redeem his people and he is so kind and loving that he doesn't make an end of us he doesn't make an end of us even though we deserve it and for 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 you to understand um the word that I want to share this morning and that that was led to share I'm going to be very honest I have to be real and raw I can't stand here and pretend and um I came to Christ in 2012 and um in 2017, I would say even 2015 or so, I went back in the world, but I was still physically in the church. And I fell back into fornication. And in that moment, you know, you think, well, you know, I know the word, I know scripture, I'm serving. And you're, somehow you go from the place where you forget in the first place why you are serving God. 
And I came in that place where it was all about pretense and reputation. Or, you know, you hear, oh, she's a good sister, so you act like, but you know, deep down, you know that if you were like to die today, you wouldn't make it to heaven. And, but God is so merciful. I remember going to sleep for a whole year and a half, just going to sleep and knowing and knowing and crying because I remember thinking, I can't even be a real testimony to my family. Because I know when the Lord called me, it was not just about me, but it was about my family and the people around me. And in Easter of 2017, one of my very close colleagues, we were very close, we started training together, suddenly died. And he was only 26. And I remember thinking, two weeks ago, we were on a residential trip with school. And here he is now dead, 26, because he was going to dive in, in a shallow water, I didn't realize, and he broke his neck, and that was it. And I remember thinking, wow, like... I don't know, I just remember thinking I was so much in my sin that I'd even share the gospel with him. I'd even share Christ, nothing. And I remember looking back and thinking, what if this had been me going on holiday and, you know, and not, and not even, and not repenting and truly, you know, the Bible said that he is just and faithful to forgive when we confess. And I remember just being so much in my sin and just like David say, um, I can't remember in which chapter, but because of his sin, his bones, they were drying and he, he knew that there was no life in him. And it's easy to come to church and pretend and, you know, and look good and all of that and have a garment, a churchy garment. But the reality is deep down I was dying and I remember coming to a place where his death affected me so much that I couldn't go to work. And I remember going to church and I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't process it. I just couldn't operate. And everyone asking me, are you okay? Oh, I didn't know you were this close. But obviously I was close to the person, but it was more thinking about my current position, where I was, my current relationship with God and knowing that if I had died, that, if I was to die in that state, I wouldn't. And I don't know if it's also a bit, you know, God has a sense of humor. It was Easter as well. And, you know, you think about it, um, resurrection and we're doing a play. And in the play, I was a backslider. So it was just a lot. And I remember going home and then just crying and saying, God, you know, I don't have the strength. And then God told me, it was like, you know, just confess. Because the Bible is clear, say, you know, confess to one another. Now that you may be forgiven, but that you may be healed. And I remember just thinking, well, I went to the altar praying. God kept saying, you know what? In spite of your weakness, I will. In spite of your brokenness, I will. And I remember just holding on to it. And he kept saying, despite of everything you see now, I will. I will, I will carry you. And I remember just thinking, this is going to be bad. Everyone's going to look at me different. But anyway, just moving fast forward. Um, um, yeah, so I will be said, back accident, I shared. And then I was removed from the church. But that is not... That is not what I want you to take from the story. What I want you to take from the story is God allowed me to go in that valley for me to be restored truly because he knew that everything around me was just a distraction. And sometimes we have to come to that place where we um, are back against the, 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 whole, the wall, sorry. And because we're too proud, we're too proud. We're so prideful that we don't want to hear. And I remember he had to force me to be in that place. And I remember just thinking... Everything is gone. What am I going to do? And just crying, just thinking, oh, I'm going to move back to France. But God just saying, in spite of, I will. So that, that's the, 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 the message I want to share with you today. In spite of, he will. Amen. So we're going to read Hosea chapter 2 uh, from verse, uh, sorry, chapter 2 from verse 14. I would say read the whole chapter really and truly just to have a, a background and a history. But we know that, that, that um, it's a picture of of Israel and, and you know, um, just, um, you know, walking away and, 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 you know, serving false God. And so you have to read that they were giving basically offering to Baal and so on. And I'm going to go straight to verse 14 because of the length of it. But the Lord is saying basically, you know, this is what you've been doing. You've been, um, um, you know, your adulteries and hollow trees, you're doing all those things. Now you're a dry land, you're, you're dry land. And we know that God doesn't want us to be dry land. There's this promise in Isaiah 56 where he say that when we come to him, we should no longer call ourselves, here I am a dry tree, but he wants to, 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 to you know, he, when we first can come to him and he will fill us up. So he doesn't want us to be dry land, but here we are in um, Hosea chapter two, he say, you know, she will be like a dry land and slay her with thirst. I will not have mercy on the children. So it's not just affecting the, the, the current generation, but also the next generation. For their mother has played a harlot and so on. So we understand it's a picture uh, at the time of Israel, but it could also be a picture of us. So I'm going to skip to verse 14. So Hosea 2, uh, verse 14. I will read from the New King James Version. 
Therefore, behold, I will, I will allure her. We bring her into the wilderness and speak comfort to her. I will give her her vineyard from there and the valley of Acre as a door of hope. She shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. Amen. I'm going to stop here. But we have here God saying that we are in the wilderness. We're in, the, in, in a valley, in a low place where there's nothing. And we know the picture of wilderness is powerful in the Bible. We think about Ezekiel is in the wilderness um, of dry bones. We have um, David in the, in, the valley of, um, in the valley of shadow of death. Um, Ezekiel, sorry, in the valley of dry bones. And then here we mentioned the valley of Acre. And Acre is a synonym of trouble. You mean trouble, disturbance. You mean affliction, adversity, a narrow place. There's literally nothing around it. It's a place that is dejected and gloomy and troubled. And here he say, however, you will be in that place, but I will comfort, I will speak comfort to her. And the valley of Acre will become now a door of hope. So if we go to Joshua 7, just to understand the context, there is a powerful story. Um, Charlene. Thank you. Joshua 7 from verse 20 to 26. And there's this story of Achan. And Achan was part of the tribe of Judah, which is a powerful tribe, as you know. And he was known as the son of... Thank you. And he was part of the tribe of Judah. But because of his sin, now he became known for his sin. And he became defined by his sin. And where I found myself in 2017, there was in position... And many of us, we might be in that position. It might not be as extreme as fornication, but it can be anything. It can be anger, bitterness, gossip, whatever it is. Resentment, doesn't matter. But we have to understand that Acre was part of one of the most powerful tribes. I'm talking about the Lion of Judah. He was from Judah. And yet, his action, because of his action, he became um, he's known for his sin and defined by sin. When you think of Acre, and this is the first thing you think, he stole the goods when the Lord told him not to. Um, so I'm going to go to Joshua chapter 7. And here we have the um, children of Israel. They came from the battle of Jericho. So they're victorious. And God is telling them, this is their first victory since entering the promised land. And God is telling them, you're not going to take any of those goods. You're going to leave them. And sometimes when we come to God, we want to take with us things. You know, we want to hold on to things. And that was me, you know, holding and grabbing this thing and thinking, I can serve God. I can be a new creation and I'm, I can still take those things with me. Yeah. And he did not understand. You know, this is like a great victory. Jericho, everyone knows Jericho when you mention. Uh, even before becoming like a, a, a Christian, I, I heard of Jericho. It's such a powerful moment. And if you think of Jericho, you think victory, you think power, you know, they overcame. Yeah. And then straight after, we're talking about the Valley of Acre. Wow. And instead of actually understanding the fact that he was victorious, that God was giving him victory to him and his people, he chose to take some garments. So um, the garment he took actually is the garment, uh, Babylon, Babylonian garment. So it's very luxurious, very splendor. And that's what we do sometimes. We want to cover ourselves with maybe money, the way we dress, our relationships, and, and you know, our career, whatever. Um, we want to hold even unto sin, you know, unto sin and cover ourselves with it and just carry it thinking, well, the Lord knows my heart, but that is not enough. And even though Achan came and said, yes, I did those things, his heart was in the wrong place. And because of his action, everyone was affected, people from his family. But what I want to focus here is the valley, the, the valley because... Um, Sometimes we think, you know, I'm in this valley because some, someone did something to, to me. We heard a lot about, um, you know, I want healing. This happened in my life. But the reality is sometimes when we examine ourselves, we are in the valley because of our own actions. And this was my case, for instance. You know, this was my action. No one forced me to point again. No one forced me to do those things. No one forced me to lie and pretend. And yet you carry on, you know, and we, then we look around and thinking, God, help me. But one of the things that happened with Achan, he didn't acknowledge it immediately. He was hiding it. He was hiding it. But God is God. So obviously, it was found. So I'm just going to read from Joshua chapter 7. So they came victorious. They had the battle of Jericho. And if we go from verse 10, we're talking about Achan here. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why, why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things 
and have both stolen and deceived. So you see, it's not just stolen, but also there's deception here. And they have also put it among their own stuff. So that's us. We come to Christ and we want to mix it with our own, our past life, our habit, lust, whatever. And we want to carry those things with us. Um, so they've both stolen and deceived. And they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before the enemies, but turned their backs before the enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. So they were meant to go to another battle at Ai. Or oh, I, I don't know it's in English, sorry. Um, Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Get up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourself for tomorrow because thus says the Lord of God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemy until you take away the accursed thing from among you. So you cannot be victorious until you take away those things that are cursed from among you. So I could not be victorious in my life. I couldn't grow because I still were holding on to things. There was, I was still holding. Whether it was hidden or in, in, you know, in display, we know God knows and sees all things. Whatever you're holding, those things were um, a hindrance in my walk. And here God say, until you take these things away, until you sanctify yourself, you can't, you can't be victorious. This is why you, you're struggling. This is why you can't move forward. And then in the morning, so I'm going to skip because of land, but in the morning, all the tribes were being brought. And then um, going straight to verse 19, sorry, 18. Then he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah was taken. Now Joshua said to Achan, my son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him. And tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver. So really, you know, expensive. There's some splendor in the garment. And the wedge of gold weighing 50 um, shekels. I coveted them and took them. And there they are, hidden in the earth, in the midst of my tent. So the fact that he was actually hidden in the, in the midst of the tent, you know, in the earth, that is showing us that he only confessed because he was kind of, he had to. But it was not, when I was reading the story, and every time I read it, I wonder, you know, the state of his heart. Was he just saying it because he had to, and he realized, we're going tribe by tribe, so I have no choice. So whether true repentance, because here, it's clear that he wanted to hold on to it for who knows how long, because he was in the earth. And what, the God, what God made me realize is that my, my, my situation, our situation sometimes, believer, we want to hide things for so long. We don't want to uproot it, and we think that it's fine that we can grow. But the reality, there's only so much we can do for the kingdom as long as those things we're holding on to this. And then we see Achan and all, um, all his um, belonging and his family, his daughter, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep. They're all being burned, and then they're being brought. Uh, sorry, they're being brought to the valley of Acre, and then they've been brought. Um, they've been stoned to death, and so on. And then everything is being burned. But then, if you compare to what we read just before Hosea, God said that valley now will become a door of hope. So God wants actually us to remember those places not as a way of thinking, "I'm still this person." But when we truly come to him and give him those things, when we allow him to remove that Babylonian garment, so our worldly lifestyle, to remove it, and to allow him to cover, it, cover us, because the garment is a picture of covering. When we truly become, uh, we come underneath his covering, then he's telling us, you will become a door of hope. When people look and hear testimony, they will have hope, because the Bible said that, you know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the worth of testimony in Revelation 5. And so when you think about it, we are all called to become door of hope, but it's up to us. So um, that is our responsibility first, to actually have an introspection and realize where am I in my relationship with God. Once we've done that, our response, where is our response going to be once we're in the wilderness? Because oftentimes, this is where God, we see many times in the Bible, we restore people when they're in the valley, when they're in the low place. And when we look, um, there's two things that came to my mind. I thought of Jesus when he was led by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness. And he hold on to the word. So that's one key. What is our response going to be? Are we going to read the word? Or are we going to still uh, walk in our own ways or ask our friends and so on? And then I thought of John the Baptist, he had faith. So here we have the word and faith. 
way of responding when we're in the wilderness. Once we allow the world to transform us, but we also have great faith that truly God can transform our, our, our situation, our circumstance, there will be then from our response. So moving on from responsibility to response, there will be a restoration. And God wants to restore us, but it's up to our, our, our response. And are we really taking responsibility? I'm going to be very honest. I could blame everyone. You know, I could be like, well, when I was a child, you know, um, I discovered this and I became um, addicted to pornography. This is why I'm acting this way. This is my father's fault. This is my mom's fault. The church is not there enough. People are not praying. You know, you can always find reason. But the reality is we have to own our responsibility and think, you know, what is our response going to be? Because we got the word of God. Everyone can access it. There's some nation where they can't even have you know, access to it. We have it freely. And are we going to have faith truly as we read the word of God that we're being transformed? Um, so my question is, are we going to reach out? When, you know, when we're in that wilderness, are we going to reach out to God? Or are we going to remain prideful and, you know, and, and, and retreat and think, you know what, God? No, it's fine. Or walk away from the church. Those people did this to me and so on. And the resolution. So for us to have the result, we need to remove that garment. We actually need to understand that a Babylonian garment represents things that are displeasing to God. Those are idols, whatever it is in our life. But we sang this morning that he's our healer. He's the one that healed us. Uh, I think we sing our redeemer. Uh, and then, you know, oh, we were singing this morning that he has so much love, but do we truly believe it that he's our healer? And um, as we know, the valley. So once we're in the valley, we might think, you know, I'm in this little place and there's no hope. And when we look at Psalm 23, you know, the, 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 the David, the psalm is keep walking. But you can't just walk with no direction. And this is where you need the word of God. This morning, actually, I was listening to a song. And in one of the, the part of the song, the song says, I think it's taken from Psalm 119. The song say, you know, um, when your word um, make an entrance, the entrance of your word bring light. That's it. Uh, Psalm 119 uh, verse 130 and I remember thinking this is powerful the entrance when the word of God come enter our life it brings light and we know the valley is a dark place so are we going to rely on the word of God and have faith as we do it um, there's just one thing I would like to share to, and, and I just want you to picture because sometimes we think well you know the person hasn't come go for anything and it's easy to stand there but Okay, so I went, I journal a lot, and um, the Lord reminded me something I had written in 2017. So after coming clean with fornication, being removed from um, the ministry I was serving in, being removed to the church, I remember just thinking, God, this is it for me. And I remember back in the days, I used to read David and thinking, oh, he's just, you know, too much. He's just, like, over-exaggerating. When you say, you know, I'm dying, my, my bones are dry. I remember reading it and thinking, this is clearly, you know, like poetry. This is not real. But when you're in the valley, for those who've been in the valley, you know, like you say things sometimes and God forced me to remember that time. Because the thing is, in the valley of Acre, there are stones. When Acre and his family were stoned to death, those stones represent something. They're, you know, we know that there's memorial stone. Stones are always a picture of remembering. But God doesn't want us to look back and remember we're still there. He wants us to actually look back and think, this is where I was, you know, in a dead place, in a place where there was nothing, and now this is where I am. So I'm just going to read, um, I'm just going to read something. So when, as I was going through my valley, and not, you know, just thinking, God, like, this is, this is it, and just not having hope. Um, and this is from September 2017. So, okay, so the, yeah, I'm just going to read it. And, and just explain my, the, the mindset at the time and thinking and re being reminded God is truly a healer and restorer. So this was the word that I wrote in my journal in September 2017. I tried to die to self, to live in the spirit, but I couldn't. I tried to kill my flesh, to become like him, but I didn't. I tried to do the right things, praise, sing the right hy hymns, act, serve the right way, but in this ocean of failure, I lost my way. I pray to become a child that will make you proud. I crave to be known for a true lover and follower of Christ. I was told that he is the God of second chances. So I kept trying, reaching for more, getting back up, never giving up. But shame and guilt had the final word, give up and quit. Words reasoning in my darkest hour. The day I killed myself, I knew I was committing murder. 
The day I killed myself, I knew I was separating myself from the Father. Yet on that day, I was glad to let behind me guilt and shame. I don't want to be remembered because before the day I killed myself, to many, I was already dead. And some of you might be in a situation, you're thinking your family, people are looking at you different, thinking there's no hope, like this person. And this was me. This was my mindset. I just thought, this is it of me. And as a child, I struggled with depression. So when I wrote those words, I was not just saying those things. I truly believed that this was it. I really wanted to kill myself. And I remember just thinking, I just cannot. There's no hope. How can I even come back from it? But it's not us coming back from it. It's the Lord restoring us. Because he said, in spite of, he will. In spite of whatever you've done, he will restore you. In spite of um, the shame, you know, he will restore you. In spite of your lie, fornication, in spite of, of, of whatever it is, he will. And it's not for men to decide. And then when we look a month later, and that's when God is so good. I um, will end with that scripture, Isaiah 52. Um, one evening, so again in the journal, and, and God woke me up, and it was Isaiah 52 that he spoke to me, and he's talking about, um, if we go in Isaiah 52 from, chap, um, from verse, amen, um, Isaiah 52, let me just go ahead. amen, so Isaiah 52, and we're talking about Zion here, and there's again this picture of garments. So I'm just going to read from verse 1. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust, arise. Sit down, O Jerusalem. Lose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Hallelujah. And here we got action. And yes, we're in the valley. But from the moment we understand that truly God is a God of restoration. He has a restorative power. We will do this thing. Because here we don't, he said we have to do something to awake. You know, we have to, to come to our senses. We have to actually realize, hold on, I got the inheritance. I can't throw everything away. Because people look at me differently. Or people think, oh, look at this person. Well, they say they're Christian. They see tr struggle with uh, alcohol. They see struggling with, with drinking, with, uh, with smoking. They see struggling with women and men or whatever it is. But we know he's a God of restoration. And he has this garment, as I 61 speak about, you know, the garment of praise. Again, the spirit of heaviness. So you have to allow the word to speak louder than your own thought. Because it's one thing to want it to be forgiven by people. But it's another thing to forgive yourself. And this is where it can be really, the challenge sometimes not so much to allow people to forgive you, but to forgive yourself, you know, and not look back. And here God is saying, awake, shake yourself from the dust, lose yourself from the bones of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Bible says we're no longer slave, we're new creation. That's why I wanted to end with um, 52. And then once there's this picture of restoration, because at the end of the day, we have to remember Romans said that we've been called according to his purpose. If we go to verse 7, the Bible says how beautiful are the feet are those um, who bring the good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation. So our restoration is not just for us, it's for those as well who are lost. We are living testimony, like each one of us sitting here with door of hope. When people look at your life, they will see what God done in your life. God, they will see. I mean, when I came to Christ and I shared with my mom my past, and I remember her just being quiet. And my mom, by God's grace, gave her life to Christ last year. But again, it took me for her to actually see truly there's hope. You know, and, it, and, and sometimes we will shy away from the darkest hour. But this is what people need to see, that we truly are a door of hope. It's easy to just, you know, um, be all come to church, come to church. But it's the hope. I remember someone sharing a testimony with her. I thought I wasn't clean and telling me how she used to, she was in, uh, a prostitute in Germany and God restored her. And I remember looking at her and I was like, there's no way. She must be lying. And I remember thinking she was my work colleague. And seeing her, I remember thinking, if there's hope for her, she's truly restored. She was a prostitute from the age of 40 in Germany. And here she is serving God. There's definitely hope for me. So we can't shy away from, you know, the, 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 our testimony because... When we do that, then it means that we're actually removing the glory of God. It becomes, it, it becomes all about us. It's not more about God's glory. And as I 61 said that when people are being planted in the righteous tree, we know that it will be the doing of the Lord. It's not about 
us not being embarrassed, people looking differently. And people might look dif at you differently, but that's not the point. The point is to give glory to God. The Bible says we've been called according to his purpose for his glory. Yeah. Amen. So my question is, as a church, are we going to, you know, when we're in the valley, are we going to reach out to God or are we going to retreat? Because we have to remember that there's people just waiting, just waiting to see the hope, to see the, you know, the transformation that truly they can move from that valley of trouble, the valley of acre, and be now you know, in the place of, of restoration, a place you know, of, 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 of victory. And if we can just end with the map. I just want you to see acre, where it was located. And you will understand that we, the God we serve, you know, we can move from victory and yet there's a valley in the middle. But then you have here Gilgal. So if you see, um, we can't see, yeah, we've got Jericho circled and then you've got Gilgal. Those two places are places of victory. But then you've got in the middle of the top, the Valley of Acre. So it is possible to go, you know, to have a, a great victory and be victorious. And next thing, you find yourself in a dry place. But remember that Gilgal is coming. It's not just one victory and then you're in the valley and you will stay there, but there is hope. So just remember that God is a God of second chances, even third chances and so on. And he's here to restore. And he wants you know, us to be just as door of hopes. Amen. Amen. So what I want to do today, I just want to invite you. Maybe you're here and you came and you don't have to say what it is, but... Maybe that you find yourself in a valley, you think you're in a valley of trouble. No one knows, people wouldn't even know if they were to look at you. But you're in a dry land, you're in a low place where you look around and you see there's nothing. You just see trouble, you see you know, a dry land, a dry place. But just remember, Ezekiel was in the valley of dry bones. And the Lord asked him, can those dry bones live? And you know, and in that moment, even if you don't believe that those dry bones can live, Ezekiel said to God, you know, Lord. So he showed to God that he had trust and faith in him. So when you come and you, and you pray, it's, God is not asking you even to believe it initially, even if you're struggling, but he wants us to actually believe that he is who he say he is. That's two different things. So it's really important to, you know, to, 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 to understand that God God is a healer, as we sang this morning. He's a, he's a way maker. Isaiah, book of Isaiah 43 says he's making way in the wilderness. But are you going to cry to him? Are you going to believe? So this morning, um, if you would like, you know, I would like to make a call of those who may be in the valley of Acre, in a, in a dry land, and they just, you know, want to come and ask the Lord, you know, God, I'm in this valley, and I just need you to bring me back. I need you to restore me. This happened, but I know you are a God that, you know, that restored, that make all things new, that you make, you know, us new creations. So if that's you today, I would just invite you to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, you know, we can't carry in being empty vessel, empty cups, but he wants to fill us up. But are we going to come before him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'll ask if Pastor Davis could lead this prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Fill my cup, Lord. Hallelujah. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. morning you can come to the altar hallelujah
our cup, Lord. Fill our cup, Lord. Fill our cup. Heavenly Father, God, as we come before you right now, oh God, we heard your word, oh Father God, spoken through your servant, oh Father. We thank you for your word that was spoken today, oh God. I pray, oh Father God, that it will touch the souls of your people, oh God, this afternoon. I pray those that are weak, oh God, that you will make them strong, oh God, through your word, oh Father God. Those, oh God, that are feeling, oh God, down and out, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you will raise them up right now, oh Father God. Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to Jesus, oh Father God. And whatever anyone is going through right now, oh God, we proclaim the victory in the name of Jesus no more doubt no more shame oh God in the mighty name of Jesus I pray oh God that you will lift up those that need a lifting right now whoever they came in however they came in this morning oh God I pray oh God that you'll change their way of thinking oh God change their mindset right now in the name of Jesus whoever is going through their wilderness experience oh God I pray oh God that you will plant a well of living water right now oh God that when they drink of it oh Father God they will have everlasting life oh God that your spirit will pour out into them oh God in the mighty name of Jesus that then they wake up in the morning they will feel fresh when they lay their head at night oh God they will feel great oh Father God oh God whatever demon is trying to oh God take over we reject it and rebuke it now in the name of Jesus oh God oh God remove every obstacle oh God maybe, maybe hindering their progress oh God in you oh Father God God, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, we believe that you are a healer. We believe that you are a provider. We believe that you are a way maker, oh God. Make a way in that dry season right now for your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, oh God, I pray that they will grab hold of you, oh God. Oh God, and I pray that they will seek your face even more, oh God. Oh God, throughout their dry season, they will seek you, oh God, and they will find you uh, because you are a God that delivers her. You're a God that will never leave us or forsake us. You're a God that will lift us up out of the miry clay. You're a God that will renew us. A God that will remake us. No matter what we have gone through, no matter who we were, you make all things new. You make all things new. You are the potter and we are the clay. And right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray you remold us right now into what you want us to be in the name of Jesus victory belongs to Jesus victory belongs to Jesus and as we stand here today we have the victory as we stand here today we have the victory when we walk out of this church we have the victory in the mighty name of Jesus Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your servant that has come, who is a living testimony, who is not ashamed to give her testimony that you will be given the glory. Oh God, I pray, oh God, that you will lift her up. I pray oh, that you will keep waking her ways, waking ways for her in the name of Jesus, that she will continue to look to you as you continue to speak to her. We thank you for her life. Oh God, we pray for blessing and blessings and blessings and blessings upon her life. In the mighty name of Jesus, as she seeks your face. Oh God, we thank you right now and give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. And the church says, Amen. 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 Clap your hands for Jesus today. Clap your hands for the restorer today the mender of broken hearts. Clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your daughter. We thank you, Lord, for such a wonderful word that has gone forth with such power, such power. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. We've come to the end of our service, but actually, uh, there's a few things I need to say. So you may be seated. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And a few things that we need to do before we leave. So before, I just would like to greet our host pastor, our senior pastor, Pastor Lamond. 
Everyone clap for Pastor Lamont and our very first lady, Sister Bev, our pastor, assistant pastor, Nathan Davis, and Sister Sharita. Give them a hand as we continue. <laughs> Amen. And um, I know that we have a first-time visitor here, and her name is Benish. Benish, everyone clap for Benish. Give her a TGS welcome. Give her a TGS welcome. You know how to do it. You know how to do. You know how to welcome our visitors. TGS. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. For a few more seconds. Come on, TGS. That's it. Yay. Amen. Woo. Yes, brother Carl. Let's get excited. And we have a second time visitor as well. And, and that's um, Sister Sonia's children, Ramel and Raynell. Come on, TGS. Clap your hands. Welcome our lovely guests to our wonderful service today. And you are welcome always. This is our house. You're welcome to our house. Amen. Amen. I believe that we do have um, someone's birthday today. Woo! And her name is Aaliyah. Happy birthday, Aaliyah. Yeah? Did I get it right? Yay! Right, guys, come on, wish Aaliyah a happy birthday. Come on. Come on. Come on, happy birthday. Ready? Happy birthday to you. had a lovely luncheon yesterday. Come on, ladies, let me hear you. Come on, let me hear you. Amen. And I believe there's more in store, so keep your ears peeled. Amen? For the ladies' department. So as we um about to leave, we must collect our today's tithes and offering. Um, so if our ushers could get ready to hand out the envelopes. And also, just remember... Um, one second, sorry. Remember that the church is a charity, and when you give, we will reclaim 25p of tax on every pound that you give. I rehearsed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll say it again. Remember that the church is a charity, and when you give, we will reclaim 25p of tax on every pound that we give. Amen. Amen. So, praise and worship. Can I please have you up? And I'll, well, actually, before, let's do the notices. So, Sunday service has changed to 11.45 a.m. Please note that down. 11.45 a.m. And Sunday school, uh, the time has changed to 9.30 a.m. And it will be Men's Sunday next week. So men, get ready. Get, me get ready, men. Mighty men of valor, get ready. It's your time next week. Invite your friends, invite your male friends. Amen. And um, don't forget also that the clocks go forward next Sunday. Please remember that as it's daylight savings, I believe. And please, please also remember, Good Friday service is on the 15th of April, um, and a delicious, delicious, delicious meal 
will be served at church straight after. So please don't go home. It's a time to fellowship, to praise our resurrected King. Amen. And in time of rush and fellowship. But please can we don donate five pounds towards this lovely meal, okay? And please give your donations to Sister Pat. Right. And if you can't afford it, don't worry as I pass this here, okay? You just come and celebrate with us and, and fellowship with us. All are welcome. Amen? Amen. So, don't forget every pound that you give, 25p. And it says here on, um, at the bottom, Luke 6, 33. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. Amen. So just remember as you're giving, give with a willing heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise and worship. Oh, our brother Leon is coming to us, is he? Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. He's coming to bless our hearts today. Amen.
beautiful. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your unfailing love. Amen. Sister Charlene, we pray for the tithes and offerings. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are faithful. You've always been faithful and you will continue to be faithful. And God, we thank you for this afternoon where we can gather together to worship you, to hear your word, God. We thank you that you are the restorer, that you've come to heal and to restore, to break chains. And right now, Lord, we thank you for the offering that has been given to you. Lord, we thank you for everyone that's been able to give. We thank you that you will continue to bless them in the name of Jesus. And those that haven't been able to, I thank you that, Lord, I ask that you will also bless them also in the name of Jesus, that we can come together and give, oh God, for the first of your kingdom that we be able to do the work that you've called us to do hallelujah here at the good shepherd hallelujah in the name of jesus i thank you that we will remain to be in unity to work together to build your kingdom in the name of jesus and i pray lord that you will bless this offering in the name of jesus and i pray lord even as we continue lord throughout the day i thank you that we will remain in your presence that we will remember the word that you have come to heal and to restore we will not remain in the low dark place lord but we will cry out to you oh god for you will deliver hallelujah when we cry out God, I thank you, and I just thank you right now this day that you will, that you are touching hearts, oh God, that you're breaking chains, that you're healing hearts, even as we worship you today. In the name of Jesus, God, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, amen. 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 Glory amen. to God, amen. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Glory to God. I just want to quickly announce that... Um, as we, as Sister Golden mentioned, our Good Friday service, our children will be taking part. So after service today, the 11 years and under, we'll be having choir rehearsal straight after service so if you're 11 years and under if you can come to the front to have choir rehearsal in the name of jesus amen amen and i believe our pastor is coming up give him a hand as he comes give the final greeting in jesus name hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Is that wonderful today? What a great.